Ionic Bonds Part 2 Naming Compounds. Open your note sheet again in Notability. So one more important thing is the ionic bond actually forms between the cation and anion because opposites attract. So when you have a plus one, and a positive one, and a negative one, they stick. If you remember with covalent bonding, they were sharing electrons, and that's kind of what holds them together. But now they're not really sharing, it's transferring, but that makes them have opposite charges, and so they stick. So the electron, I'm going to say that again, if you look at this GIF, the yellow electron from the sodium transfers to the chlorine. The sodium loses one electron, and the chlorine gains it, and they stick. Kind of like magnets. We call it electrostatic attraction, but we're not going to have you memorize that, but it's called electrostatic attraction. It's the attraction between positive and negative ions. All right, we're going to practice a little bit with the names before we end this. So vocabulary again, chemical names and formulas. When you see um, the words written out, of course, that's the name. And when you see the symbols, that's a formula. And remember, two capital letters means this is a compound. It's something bonded, two elements bonded. And this is table salt. So table salt is called sodium chloride, and the formula is capital N-A, capital C-L. Why is it called sodium chloride? For ionic compounds, the chemical name is always in the order cation, anion. And the cation does not change from the periodic table, but the anion does. So when you have sodium as the cation and chlorine as the anion, formula, or sorry, the name of the compound is sodium chloride. Lithium oxide, aluminum fluoride, magnesium phosphide, sodium sulfide. These are just a few of the hundreds of possibilities there are. And when I say hundreds of possibilities, that's because if you look back at this, look at all these metals. If I choose one, magnesium, it could bond to Br, which would be bromine, but it becomes bromide, potassium chloride, lithium sulfide. Any of these uh, can bond to each other if it's a, a metal and a nonmetal. It's a, the formula, though, gives you a little bit more information. Formulas show ratios of ions. And so remember the formulas, um, I'm just going to jump ahead here, they often have these little numbers. So the formula also gives you a little more information than the name does. It tells you the ratio of the ions that are in that compound. Um, and just a little background, um, a ratio it always compares numbers of things. And let's just think about these easy ones. What ratios are shown in the pictures? So when I look, um, oftentimes we talk about when you're looking for colleges, or schools, you know, what is the ratio of students to teachers? In this picture, we see two students, it looks like, and one teacher. So we often say for ratios, we use the language two to one. Two, te two students to one teacher. In the Big Mac, uh, we see burger to bun. Burger is the meat part, one, two, and the buns, one, two, three. So there's two burgers to three buns. So that's a ratio of two to three. And you might have seen this kind of notation in math class before. For art, there's some connections with ratios, like with beading. If you were trying to figure out how many beads do I need to buy or count out for my pattern here, the yellow beads to the white beads looks like one yellow bead one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to eight white beads. Now, if I counted both of these, I would get one, two yellow, 
and then that was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 2 to 16 is the same ratio as the 1 to 8. So we usually put ratios in the lowest terms, right? So we call it the lowest ratio. So my ratio here is 1 to 8. Um, if I need a really long chain of beads, I'm going to need more, but I still know the ratio is going to be 1 to 8. So remember that the subscript tells you the number of the atom that comes before. So here I see the subscript 2, and that means 2 of the CL. So let's um, fill in the ratio of atoms, and then we're going to say the name as well. For BA, I see no subscript. When there's no subscript, that's the same as if there's a 1. So 1 BA and 2 CL. So the way I would say that is the ratio is 1 BA to 2 CL. 1 to 2. And then the name is BA is barium. If you're not sure, you'd have to look at a periodic table. Chlorine becomes chloride. So now pause here and then try to fill in the rest of your chart. And here are the answers then. And now I've done the coloring with the red for the cation and blue for the anion. So 1 Ba to 2 Cl, we just did that one together, barium chloride. And here's what you should have for the rest. So I'll just read through it in case you got any had any mistakes there. Um, Al2O3, the little 2 means 2 of the thing that come before. So that's 2 Al. And then 3 comes after the O, so 3 O. And then that's called aluminum oxide. Next one, Li2S. Remember when there's no subscript, that's the same as a 1. So that means 2 to 1. And that's called lithium sulfide. Sulfur becomes sulfide. So lithium sulfide. And then the last one, I'll get rid of my face. Ca3P2 means 3Ca and 2P, and that's called calcium phosphide. So back to our question of why is sodium chloride called sodium chloride? It's because it is a sodium cation bonded to a chlorine, but that has become an anion, so then we call it sodium chloride. And the formula is NaCl because it only takes one Na and one Cl for them to both become stable. And that's what we're going to learn more about in our next lesson. Thanks for watching.